All right, great. Um, well, I'll go ahead and get us started. Um, welcome, everyone, to our funky bunch of um, the funky bunch of experience building who makes up a UX team where we explore all the different roles that make up a UX team at Red Hat. Uh, everything from designers from different areas, uh, writers working in content strategy, uh, UX researchers, developers, managers, a whole bunch of us kind of make up the UX experience team. Um, and so today we'll be talking and asking some questions of the panelists that you see here today. Um, a couple things before we get started. Since we are on a limited time, Mary um, Shakshabar, um, an interaction and visual designer on our team, has volunteered to kind of monitor chat and answer any questions that we might have. Also, if you'd like to reach out to any of the panelists, you should find an attachment um, that kind of has a slide where it tells everyone's name and their contact information. We would absolutely love to hear from you. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started with introductions. First, I'm Stacy Logan. Um, I'm a in principal interaction designer, and I'll be our moderator today. Um, next, uh, Chris Shin, a, a senior interaction designer. Uh, he graduated from Tufts University with a degree in human factors engineering and computer science. He's been with Red Hat for seven years as an interaction designer and briefly as a developer. His current work focuses around metrics, logging, and all things observability. Next is Michael Celadonia, a senior visual designer. Michael has a BA in graphic design from North Carolina State University. Uh, he's been with Red Hat for three years as a senior and visual interaction designer. This year, he's taken on the role of visual design team lead supporting cross-team efforts, as well as working on the open source design system Patternfly. Next is Abby Donahue, um, associate manager, UX content strategist. After graduating with a degree in English, Abby started her career in marketing. Shortly after, she moved to the tech field and took on roles ranging from technical support and writing to e-learning and marketing. Since breaking into UX, her goal has been using writing and communication skills to bring a sense of humanity to the world of technology. Next is S.J. Clark, senior, U UX experience, senior user experience researcher. SJ has been with Red Hat for nine years. Her background is in technical writing with a little design thrown in, all of which is in service of making complex, critical products understandable. Next is Jesse Huff, JavaScript developer accessibility specialist. Jesse, a front end developer, has a passion for inclusivity and advocacy that landed her a role of overseeing accessibility efforts across Red Hat user experience design. She uses audit, design, testing, tooling, and processes to create accessible product experiences. Her goal is to lead and educate others to build experiences for all. And last but definitely not least is Natalie Wong, um, Principal Interaction Designer. Natalie um, held positions as a tools and UI developer before obtaining her MS in Human Factors and Information Design in 2012. She's been with Red Hat for four years and is currently in the design lead. This is currently the design lead for one of our larger product spaces. Thank you again, panelists, for joining us. Um, let's go ahead and dive into the questions. Um, so, we, as we kind of talked about, what the uh, panel is about itself um, is really what are the different roles that go together and kind of make up the UX team. So, what we'd like to hear from you is um, how did you get into UX and user experience design? Uh, let's start with Abby. How did you get into UX? Thanks, Stacy. Uh, great question. My journey into UX has been quite unconventional. I studied English in school, and I didn't know that UX or technology was even a career option for me. I started working in marketing at a civil engineering firm, and that's when I started becoming really fascinated with this intersection between the arts and the sciences, and that's ultimately what inspired me to take the plunge into the technology field. I started working at HubSpot, which is a global software company, and I worked in their technical support uh, department before becoming a technical writer. And then over the next couple of years, I took on various content roles in e-learning as well as content marketing. And I really started appreciating and learning firsthand about the importance of um, human-centered design and how you can use content to help make that happen. And inevitably, I started becoming really interested in UX and its focus on empathy and people. 
So I moved into my first UX role here at Red Hat, actually. I joined Red Hat almost two years ago, and I was a team of one at the time. I was a UX content strategist, and it was such a great experience because I got to meet a lot of people, but I also got exposure to a lot of different UX disciplines. And I found myself becoming very fascinated with visual design because the visual aspect of an experience can really help convey information and functionality, but it also heavily influences a user's uh, interaction and behavior. And that really interested me and caught my eye. Um, so recently, I moved into a management position for content and visual design. And that has been such a privilege because I get to not only explore two areas I'm really interested in in UX, but also work with uh, really talented people who are a lot smarter than me. Thank you, Abby. Uh, I love your enthusiasm. Uh, so let's next up, let's have Michael tell us about how you got into UX. Oh, sure. Um, and Abby, you are just as smart as anyone else here. So, <laughs> um, so I have a, a background in uh, graphic design. Um, I kind of grew up, actually, fortunately enough, I was able to just be on the computer all the time when I was a kid. I grew up on like Windows 95. And at a really young age, I discovered graphic design. And I was probably like 11 or 12. And I just saw all these cool things that people were making. And I really wanted to be able to do it. And I sort of taught it to myself. And you know, throughout high school, when they're trying to get you to um, pick a career at such a young and um, mentable age. Um, I I was one of the few people who knew exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, I was able to work uh, to get into the program pretty much on my dreams at NC State. I've been an NC State Wolfpack fan my whole life because my parents went there and they have a very competitive design program that I was able to get into, which I was really excited about. And um, at the time, uh, at least while I was there, they were doing a really great job of providing a uh, sort of dual education in both a, a traditional graphic design sense. And they were doing that alongside of um, a focus on a more modern UX uh, design kind of education. And so from that point on, I really, uh, with that kind of overlap happening, I realized that there was a ton of connection between the two um, design kind of industries or practices. And having grown up on a computer and never really gotten off of the computer, uh, I had always been kind of thinking about UX, but never really you know, consciously recognize it as uh, a field or anything. So UX was never really a foreign concept to me. It kind of felt like something I had been doing all along. And I was able to sort of combine it with graphic design and um, transfer those skills quite easily. And um, yeah, so I decided to take a shot at it and got an internship at IBM. And I discovered I really liked it. And I enjoyed this kind of um, sense of being able to uh, transfer my skills over to this new industry. At the time, I was also doing a lot of freelance graphic design work. And doing that while I was getting my education kind of uh, put a, a damper on my like passion for graphic design. So uh, I kind of figured out that UX was this really nice way to use those skills and have a great career and still find a lot of fulfillment with this kind of work without kind of um, uh, you know putting out the flames of my passion by <laughs> making it my job. So I still get kind of the best of both worlds. And that's why I'm here. Nice. Um, how about you, Natalie? Um, how did you get into UX? Yeah. Um, so when I was, so I actually have a bachelor's in computer science. And one of the computer science courses that I took was actually called hum Human Computer Interactions. And it was that course and another course in software engineering, just like, you know, how to, how to have a software engineering project, how to manage it. Um, it really taught me that I really liked to talk to the customer, getting their requirements, and then building out an interface for it, um, which is what really sparked that kind of passion in me on that side of the house. Um, but once I got into the workforce, it was a lot of you know heads down coding. So I kind of worked my way, if you will, um, from being a tools developer into a UI developer. And from there, um, I had some really, really great coworkers who actually started uh, courses in user experience. And so that kind of got me into the Bentley program. 
um, which then delved me further into all the all the studies that you can about being a user experience person. Um, so it's it's very much of a progression, if you will, of you know coming from the technical side into uh, more of the user facing side of the house. I would say um, that got me really into the field, if you will. And so after that, it's been kismet. Okay, with that. Great. Um, well, thinking about how we got into UX, um, how about we kind of change gears and think about what we currently do? So I'm curious. Um, how do you and your role currently fit into UX? Um, and so go, let's go with SJ. How do you? Yeah, great question. Um, research is kind of in a um, unique position where we are, it, we should be, in all <laughs> phases of the design process for the user experience. Um, when we are involved early on, it's kind of called generative research. So we're trying to uh, figure out what folks are trying to do, what their goals are, what their motivations are. This is long before you're even looking at screens or looking at pixels or designs. Uh, we're just trying to understand their use cases and, and their behaviors. Uh, so that ha hopefully happens early enough in the process that it will help the designers figure out what to design and how best to design it. Uh, the more work you can do on the front end in the early days, um, the easier the work becomes later on. And we show up, we as researchers show up later in the process too, uh, to help kind of evaluate those designs and those ideas as they become more formulated and more solid. Um, so we will sometimes take a prototype, you know, we've been known to take paper prototypes or, you know, prototypes on the screen to put them in front of users and get their um, take on it and help the designers adjust from there, you know, do some iterations and kind of refine. Um, but we're also known to do uh, evaluation on live software too. So if it's already been released, um, there's no reason why we can't do some testing on that and get some feedback because that'll help us figure out what we want to do in the next release. So really we are embedded hopefully throughout the entire process. Great, thank you. Um, Chris, how about you? Yeah, uh, so the job that I do at Red Hat has changed over the last several years and it kind of uh, has adjusted along with the needs that Red Hat has. So when I started, uh, we had simple problems, right? Our, our UIs didn't match each other, the different products looked different. We didn't have a lot of consistency in the branding and the navigational schemes and things. So the work was really, uh, for lack of a better word, simple. Uh, it was just looking at what we have and making things match each other, deciding what looked good. Uh, and it was very kind of low level. And then once we solved that layer of problems, we moved on to the next one of what are the most important tasks and how do we make those easier to do. So kind of more uh, complicated thinking about connecting different pieces together and designing larger flows. And then now uh, it's one level above that even of thinking about how do people accomplish goals across multiple different products and um, larger larger scale thinking like that. So I would say that my day-to-day -day job has gone from doing things like making wireframes and contributing to our pattern library to now my primary role is almost coordinating between different people and sharing information and things like that. So I've gotten to do a little bit of everything over the last few years. Wearing many hats, it sounds like. <laughs> um, all right, how about you, Jesse? So as a developer, we're going to be taking the designs that are created and then building that out into the reality that the users will interact with. So we have to consider a lot of things about the experience that we're building. For example, my area of focus is accessibility. Um, and the final product basically can't be a good user experience if it's not accessible to our users. And accessibility is about removing the barriers to usage and thinking through what all of our users experience and not just what the average is or what maybe the developer or designer that created it um, experiences. So it's about empathy and building something that is helpful and solves user problems. So in my role, I help designers and developers imagine what the full range of experiences with their UI might be. And I help guide them to use practices and development solutions that are more open to all. And this would include everything from analyzing designs and UIs, using different tools for testing a solution's accessibility, or even building out the, uh, the solutions myself. Great, thank you. 
Um, so since we've got the time, I'd love to ask a bit more of a harder question, I'll call it, and this is kind of, any of you can kind of volunteer to answer here. Um, and I hear this question a lot is, um, what is the difference between UI and UX? Who's gonna volunteer? Someone should, I don't have to pick someone. I will, I will, okay, you go, Natalie. Both of you, you I think. I was gonna say, like, I was, I was, I've been in both positions before. And it's it's sort of like for for the UI, it's very much of you know the the user facing interaction, right? So I, I don't want to pigeonhole to GUI, the CLI, and the API, but eh, pretty much like those type of interfaces, if you will. That's what I, I would say UI would focus on. But UX could be broadened just a little bit more in the sense that it encapsul encapsulates the user's journey, the user's flow, the overall experience, not just necessarily what they see in front of them, but also like what about the buying experience or the, the support experience too? Um, that that also matters, you know, because it, it all comes back to the product, what the product can do for you. Um, so that that's my spiel on what UI and UX is the difference. I don't know, Michael, if you have a different one. I think that was great. I totally agree, and I I have a a slightly different perspective, but it's sort of just an alternate uh, direction to come from, but. I really don't think there's much of a difference at all uh, beyond what you've stated, Natalie. Um, ultimately, I think we're we're product designers, and uh, we are designing products of the digital realm, whereas other product designers might be designing products of the physical realm, like an industrial designer designing a a, a kitchen appliance or something like that. Right? Um, a good industrial designer is going to think about that full process that Natalie's talking about. That um, you know what's what's it look like when it's not being used how is it ergonomic in its usage um how is it made with sustainable materials and how is it you know how can you increase the the value that we bring to the consumer and i think all of that is exactly the same for us it just um you know just relates to this different context of being a digital product that people are using and the interface is the experience so I think that's kind of where I come from is this idea that I don't think there's really too much of a difference at all. Um, but I also agree with what, Nat what you said, Natalie. I think that was a really uh, succinct um, explanation. Does anyone else have any ideas for that or are we ready for the next question? I'm gonna take silence as ready. Um, so this one is another one. Uh, given that we've already talked about all the different roles that all of us have based on where we came from and even what we're currently doing, um, I'm curious, what are some of the skills and character, um, characteristics you think are necessary to make a quote unquote good UX designer? I could probably speak to this. I'm not technically a UX designer, but being in the, in like the UX field as a content designer, I, I would definitely say first and foremost is collaboration. A design cannot really be successful, in my opinion, unless there are a variety of stakeholders involved. And I would say the same is true for the content that you create. Uh, I feel like in school we were taught that writing and creating content was an individual thing, and it certainly can be. Um, but I also think there's value in making it collaborative. So I would definitely say collaboration is the first most important skill. and. Um, Alongside that, I would I would say empathy. You have to put others before yourself and really put yourself in someone else's shoes and try to try to really consider people who aren't exactly like you. And Jesse can probably talk more about that with accessibility because that's really important. Thinking about all abilities and all different people and really recognizing that this experience is not just for people like you; it's for all people. Yeah, it's funny you said that because actually I was thinking of saying empathy as well because, I mean, no matter who you are, whether it's the, the researcher, the designer, the developer, you have to be thinking through your user and what they're experiencing and what they um, might think, feel, and there's their problem that you're trying to solve. So you should be a good problem solver. And uh, everyone here on this panel has helped, had all kinds of different backgrounds, and I think it shows that uh, no matter what background you come from, if you have empathy and the ability to... to um, you know, help people, um, it'll help you in this career. The one thing I was gonna say is listening, which is you get to empathy through listening. So you need to be a very good listener, a very good active listener, um, but also negotiation. Um, if I could go back and take a class um, in either undergrad or graduate, it would be something to do with negotiation. 
because a lot of what you need to do is sell your idea and get your idea understood and accepted into the business, right? And some of that is negotiation. Some of it is trading off, you know, maybe this is a little harder to build, but it'll have much more payoff. Um, so I think that's a super important skill too. I appreciate that correction too, Abby, because you're right. It's not just designer. As a UX des um, designer myself, I think that's kind of what I immediately go to. But as this conversation proves, there's so many different roles within UX. So I'll say UXer instead from that. Um, but kind of playing off what SJ had said, um, there's been some questions around how do you, where do you go to learn about UX? Is there blogs, you know, um, you know, anything that kind of, what are your go-to kind of methods of learning about um, UX in any of the roles that you have? I may have a little bit of an unusual stance here that I don't really read a lot of blogs or anything about design. Maybe it's because I'm less visual based, mm. but uh, I think there's some really fantastic literature out there. Like this is a really good book um, for just learning about um, you know presenting data in a way that's easy to distinguish and things like that. There's lots of really good uh, tomes out there uh, if you want to avoid the trendier stuff and look at the things that are like really backed by research and then are reliable. What was the name of that book? Sorry, it kind of flashed pretty quickly. Um, yeah, sorry. This book is called About Face, The Essentials of Interaction Design. Uh, that's a really good one. Uh, and I have a handful of others on the shelf here, but I, I can't pick a favorite. This is just the, the largest one that was easiest to grab. Anyone else? Yeah, being, I guess, as someone being on the more visual side, I definitely like to look for inspiration um, online. But I actually agree with Chris. Um, the learning process is sort of never ending, and it's something that's always ongoing. So whenever I'm using a website or an app, I'm, I'm semi-consciously thinking about those interactions and how they feel to me and how they look and how, they, how the experience is, and sort of evaluating it in my head, taking down notes, if there's anything I see that kind of uh, relates to a design problem I've been trying to solve, I think about how those connections appear and what that means and how I can use that. So I think taking, and this sort of goes for design of all sorts, but just taking inspiration from everyday life and everywhere you go um, can really go a long way in terms of heightening your, uh, uh, your taste, I guess, of design. And, you know, you're developing this more discerning taste by just noting things that you're experiencing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, yeah. I would say I learn about UX from other people. Um, just talking to like, user, well, I mean, everybody's a user, but just being able to talk to people about things and analyzing certain aspects with them helps me learn like how they feel and in turn, how I feel about things. So people. <laughs> User, that is kind of what we call ourselves, right? So, yep, absolutely. Um, okay, well, then kind of playing off of that too. So it sounds like some really great methods of kind of learning and, and kind of expanding your skill set with that. But if you're looking for anything like a, um, specific certifications or um, degrees and learning themselves, I'm curious if anyone has any kind of recommendations or um, sources or places to start. I recently took a couple of classes through Nielsen Norman Group. So NNG or nngroup.com, um, I was a little skeptical about them because I felt like, oh, geez, this is stuff I should probably already know and already be familiar with. But I was very pleasantly surprised at how much additional content there was, you know, beyond what I felt like I already knew. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and they have a wide range of topics from, you know, interaction design and visual design and management and research. And um, there's all kinds of topics there. They're like one or two days. Uh, so definitely worth checking that out. I'd also say look at your local university or, or any university you might be um, inquiring about. Um, it's coming to my mind that like a lot, there's a lot of places now that are having courses um, for user experience. Um, I know during my time, there wasn't 
as much, but then like it, I felt like it just exploded. Um, so definitely check out your check out your surroundings. You know, you never know. But I'll give a shout out to Bentley University. What? What? <laughs> I was waiting for someone that has to recommend something that they've been to. I, um, anyone else with those kind of any certs or any other kind of learning uh, mechanisms you'd recommend? Um, all right. Well, let me kind of change directions here a little bit then um, and, and kind of move back into what we had talked about uh, between kind of UI versus UX. Um, I think in, in a conference like this, we've got a, a lot of people who might be developers or working kind of on back end development and engineer. Um, so there's some kind of questions about the differences between UI, UX developer and back end developer engineer, or even just how you work between those um, and, and work with them in your data lives, because a lot of what we do is working with technical people. Um, so I'd love to hear any experiences you have and kind of recommendations with that. That might be a tough one. Should I have not kind of ended with the tough one, maybe? So when you say experiences with that, like what exactly, I guess, are you asking? Sure, um, I think that, yeah, no, thanks for asking for clarification there, because it is kind of a broad question. But um, first off, kind of starting with the difference between UI, UX developer and back end, front end developer back-end, excuse me, back-end developer engineer, but then also thinking about how us and UX work with them um, on the day-to-day -day basis and kind of communicate with them. Well, I, I, it goes back to collaboration, I think. Um, so um, at least in my um, experience that, um, you know, the all the engineer, honestly, everybody has, you know, a, a place and a position in in de designing and developing a product because if what you want to show the user that the back end can't give you well then you're you you can't get that and so it's almost like you you need to have everybody on the train in the room together and the most successful projects projects that i've been on Coco, um, we're all in the room and we we design together where like the back end folks are with me in lockstep as so is the UI and as so is, you know, the product manager too. you know, everybody's involved documentation as well. Um, and the most successful projects, like I said, everybody's in the room, everybody's participating, everybody's thinking and empathizing kind of with the user to then know what they need to do in their jobs to make that happen, to make that fruitful. So I don't know if that helps or hurt, but that's, in my experience, that's what it is. Everybody needs to all hands on deck type of thing in, in the process, in the design process, I should say. So. I totally agree, Natalie. It's, it's all connected and um, you really have to be, collaboration really is the name of the game because there's always this balance of um, wanting to drive technology forward, but also acknowledging the, the situation and the limitations that you do have and designing within those so that you're not wasting time designing a bunch of solutions, which ultimately just get cut short because, or, you know, um, compromised because of technical limitations. Um, but like I said, at the same time, you do want to take note of when it might be more appropriate to try to push technology forward and see if we can push for more um, advantages there and all of that. But all of that comes back to collaboration and context. So, Great answers to my rather complex question. So thank you guys, I really appreciate that. Um, so we're kind of running out of time here. So just want to say thank you again to our panelists for joining and for all of our viewers. Um, you can probably find a recording of this conference um, within the next few days, I understand. And also, as mentioned before, there's an attachment with all of our names and contact information because we would love to hear from you. So thank you again to all of our panelists. Thank you. So, um...